Hi everyone and welcome on back over to Group A Action here on the secondary stream. That's Lacoste. Fantastic suit, by the way. Thank you very much. Pimp and, uh, suit, what the uh, cab called it. Oh yeah? What would you call my suit? Ten seconds Gray suit. All right. I'm Dakota, gray suit man, and we are Five getting ready to hop remaining. into heat number two. It's LGD Gaming versus Optic. This is actually a pretty hype matchup right now. These are the two teams at the top, if I'm not mistaken. Three and one apiece. Pretty damn go. nice. Yeah. Uh, should be good. Optic really step up at at their game. The decision making is on point. LGD Gaming, uh, one of the strongest teams, the Chinese one and overall, Dire I dare team. to say. Um, besides VG, like LGD and uh, VG really looking hot uh, from China. Yeah, I mean, LGD, they didn't have a whole lot of... What the hell's happening right now? The fire, The picks oh. from Optic's side is just non-stop. They banned immediately, and now they're picking immediately. They're just trying to shove the ball back in the court of LGD. But let's roll back a couple of steps. Whew. Okay, so, yeah, uh, I mean, LGD, they didn't have a whole lot of land track record recently coming into this Five event, but people remaining. were just putting out murmurs like, LGD are starting to look pretty good, guys. They're, they're competing online. Dire they're looking pretty good. They're stomping everyone else. But we were still expecting, like, Newbie and such to really be the teams to step up. Now we're in a position here. Newbie need to step up. LGD at the top. And even Optic Gaming may have been surprising some people with their performances too so here we are this is going to be a battle for first place of Ten group a remaining. and look at the picks already coming up man lgd managed to wiggle themselves a chen Five pickup which may have been remaining. something that optic were hoping to grab for themselves but they get it instead which means optics snag up a sand king and then the keeper of the light yeah the best I, hero <laughs> in the game i saw your face when keeper was picked uh, if, if uh Optic wanted the chant, they would LGDs get it. May um, well, never mind, uh, they had the, the second pick. So, Sanking Keeper of the Light. Uh, Sanking one of the better heroes overall in the past, whatever, six months. Yeah, the hero can be back. played at uh, many positions. But what would you say, like, the new Slardar is looking like a yeah, possible contender now. Yep, th that's know? definitely true. Uh, Sanking, on the other side, received a little bit of nerf, uh, five movement speed removed, and uh, stun duration per level. Uh, but... I don't think that's a that's a big remaining. big deal. Maybe for early games you still get tranquil boots, so you're you're speedy enough, remaining. and you have move speed talent to pick it up. Anyway, level four stun got buffed. It was from 2.17 to 2.2 seconds, so that's a huge buff right there. Woo. 0.03. It's one of those things, like, you see it on paper, and that's one thing, but maybe once you get the hero in your hands is when you start noticing and feeling these kind of differences. Yeah. Certainly with that, like, gyrocopter change, for sure. And Which, by the way, if gyrocopter is still, uh, what, defeated, 0 and 7 or whatever, yeah, I, I he's still <laughs> 0 and 8 now or whatever. I, well, maybe some other games uh, were more successful with the gyro. Um, Every time we see him, it's just... It's, he just loses. Yeah, yeah. this 10-second flat cannon increased cooldown is just uh, way too much. I, uh, people will probably realize it and uh, switch to something else. Uh, Chen also got the nerf, which is pretty huge uh, in terms of uh, disrupting the enemy uh, safe lane. So Chen doesn't pretty much do anything until he gets the first creep at the uh, one minute mark. Then he needs to move to a lane. So before 115, I can only see him just trading some right clicks in the off lane. That's pretty much it. But oh, still a little bit broken in my book with the with the sandback. Just feels. Yeah. Um, I mean, we it saw it yesterday. Even after the change, he did have a bit of a slower start, but the send back, it's just like, you can't stop it. Yeah, if you unless you have if something to do. If you don't have anything to dispel it, it's just way too overpowered. If you combine it Ten with, let's say, remaining. something like Astral, that, that that's a guaranteed save. Yep. Astral, Five send back, remaining. can't really stop it. Goddamn. More bands to fly out here from both teams in the second phase. LGD get rid of the Beastmaster, the Puck, and the Razor, Optic. Move the Night Stalker, of course, because you got Keeper of the Light. You don't want a freaking Night Stalker LGD out there. Get rid of Shadow Fiend, Rubik, and they're going to be picking up ooh, a Venomancer. The first, I think, we'll get the cast of the event. Yeah, there. I didn't see any Venomancer so far. I, I mean, the, the hero is not a damage uh, dealer anymore. He, he got the huge nerves at one Ten point when he was uh, overpowered. Uh, with the XP talent, and uh, he had the damage remaining. talent as well. So you get uh, faster to that damage talent, then you can actually scale well into the late game. Now Venomancer m feels more 
like a utility build, go for a four staff pike, solar crest, whatever it's needed, pipe. Uh, it feels like Aghanim Scepter is a must and that hero right mm -hmm. now and the, the talents really scale well with the Aghanims as well. Venomancer, pretty appropriate, not just because he's green and sassy for optic gaming, but also just because if you now you're pairing him together with a Keeper of the Light, you have pretty dang good objective defenses right now like preventing them from being able to easily push or close out the game and pie cat is typically one of those players who loves to get nursed on one of those really high profile core heroes that like to really shine later on so i wonder if this means they're going to be giving him something that could just Dying really pick. nurse a bit to the later game carl got me intrigued enough to think like are you going to be considering something like a, a naga or uh, an alchemist or, or something crazy like that that you can stall things out yeah, LGD picked up Avenge. They had uh, great success so far with it. Uh, they played it as both position 4 and 5. Uh, X Nova is going to play Chen, which means uh, FY is going to be on Venge, most Five likely. X Nova's Chen yesterday was really good. I mean, X Nova's early game has been so good almost every game. Even the game we saw them lose against TNC, he had a really good start to that game. But then just TNC were so chaotic. Makes me curious to see if Optic even watched that game. Based on their lineup, I'm not feeling like it's a chaotic kind of a draft that like TNC was able to use. But it looks like Optic kind of have their own formula they want to be going with here. It is something a bit different. So we'll see if it does kind of catch LGD off guard. Yep. Yesterday in one of the series, they also had Chen Venge duo. So they they played around it really nice. Venge swap into Centaur stun twice on Phoenix. Yeah. So he couldn't even use any of his spell. Really they, nicely timed. They did have Beastmaster that game. And all those auras really made it a lot better for them to kind of just accelerate the objective game once they were kind of ahead. So I, I wonder what they're going to supplement for the Beastmaster this yeah, they, time. They banned Beastmaster by themselves. I guess they were afraid of uh, Caudal plus uh, Beastmaster LGD's lane. Uh, Optic turn. loves to run it. So maybe OD should be a, a good pickup against these heroes. Good good save hero. Really works well against the Dragonite. They need something. Or, or if they want to go with a Wiper, is tanky enough, a lot of magical resistance uh, against Ten Venomancer and Sanking can break the Dragonite as well. Five seconds you know, I'm remaining. selfish for thinking about just the Coddle only, but I will say that one of the worst pr things you Dying can go against as a Coddle is the Nyx Assassin. But What? Ooh, who's that guy? I haven't seen that guy in a while. I think Mineski played it uh, one game. Yeah, I heard rumors of there was a anti-mage Naga game, so I, that might have been it. Like core Naga? Yeah. All right. So anti-mage. It remaining. doesn't feel like this is a good anti-mage game. Five seconds what is it that makes it feel like it's not a good anti-mage game? Just in case there's anyone out there they, who's not seeing a, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, they have a good control with uh, Dragonite, Keeper of the Light. Uh, if he has no mana for a blink, blinding light, and then you have a sanking with low cooldown stun. It just doesn't feel like an anti-mage game to me. Like, you have uh, heroes who don't have a big mana pool. Are they going to be able to hunt him down, though? I mean, I imagine Anti-Mage is just going to try to avoid all that trouble, continue to farm up, you know, kind of just be under the radar, and then shine much later into the game when maybe all that stuff is just not... You know, by then he might have a Manta style to just shrug off the mana leak uh, and ways to just kind of avoid the trouble and the lockdown of Optic. I mean, if Optic are going to be privy to that and just kind of keep him in check... I mean, I imagine that is what you want to be doing, but if they tend to ignore him and let him have yeah, his way. With the first uh, two picks, bad. Chen and Venge, uh, it feels like they want to put a lot of pressure early on, yeah. and then, then you pick a hero like an anti-mage who needs uh, probably the most time to come online as a hero. So would that mean maybe they want to do something like, I don't know, offlane um, tiny and get someone else who's hype? Like the four of them could be high pace and then leave the anti-mage out of the game? They're going to rely so Five much on a tiny this game, so it might be a mid tiny and mm -hmm. uh, and get an offlane hero, which Optic also thinks. That's why they banned, banned out the Underlord. Th this tiny will need levels and to have a good early game so he can make space for anti-mage. And the push lineup oh. already coming up from Optic is, is really good. That's why... Anti-mage pick surprises me. Uh, I wonder what they will get for that offlane then. Yep. They can still put the tiny on the offlane and uh, move Chen after. It's not as strong as before, but Ten it's still good. Remaining. 
Hmm. But then, then you end up with the with the lane Venge and the anti mage, which is pretty weak. Ooh, Lady Lena comes out. Not the first time we had seen this Lena come out either, was it? No, oh, this you is like the third time I see Lena. Tiny. Oh, it was SCCC who did play it the one time we caught it. So it's gonna be a tiny on the off lane. Yep, Lena. Lena Five mid. I mean, the four of them outside of anti mage should be able to kind of get some work done and uh, kind of pull attention elsewhere. But okay, I mean, for a pie cat hero that wants to be able to pull it to the late, late part of this game, I think he couldn't ask really for anything better than a Terra Blade. I'm not sure about this anti mage pick. It just doesn't feel right to me. Especially against the Terror Blade. She just destroys him. Terror Blade destroys Anti Mage. Maybe at the like super late game, Anti Mage can man up and fight against him. But the the lineup from Opti Gaming is really fast. They don't have any any big ulti cooldowns. Even if the I mean they have some, but even if they're on cooldown, they can still take a fight. I mean same goes for LGD. Also no no big ulti cooldowns. But I I gotta say Optic Gaming lineup uh Feels feels great. They just need not to lose the laning stage too hard. PPD will be the one playing Coddle. 33 on a Venomancer. Hmm. I wonder how they're going to lane it up. You know, are they going to bring the Coddle alongside the Venomancer, you think? I mean, that's a pretty disgusting lane. I think they want to pressure the Anti-Mage, so I suppose they will have two heroes at one point uh, with that Venomancer. Dragonite is... Uh, Self-sustainable, doesn't need uh, any rotation before he gets level 6. Then you want to pressure the tower. So we can expect Sanking or Caudal moving there. But uh, until he gets to level 6, it's just going to be pretty much oh. static. Either on bottom or a top lane, the support duo from Optic. Calm down, Peter. Good luck, have fun in all caps. He's like yelling whoa, it at the other whoa, team whoa, right whoa. now. You just got to relax a bit. Uh, look at the instant movement coming out here from... From Optic, they insta-pinged and smoked and beelined it directly towards Chalice's direction. He's actually going to be popping up from the bottom. Ooh, may have just narrowly avoided that one. They ping it out now, but it looks like that opportunity may be a bit too late. So instead, they just plop down. Good deep ward. Mm. Yeah, that deep ward uh, will provide them the info about uh, how the lanes are going to go so they can swap accordingly. All right, they see Tiny to the bottom lane here. Some... Eager to see how they decide to make their adjustments. Meanwhile, LGD have their own movements here. Looks like at the moment, Ame on that anti-mage is with FY's Vengeful Spirit towards the top half of the map. I'm, I'm wagering, well, no surprise, see maybe, aka Somnus is Lena, residing in this mid lane, of course, with those two shared tangos and one null in hand. Don't we decide that we're not going to call him Somnus because nobody calls him I said, why do we have to call him Somnus? I think maybe is such a cooler name, but Shamnish. LGD maybe, it just seems so right. Yeah, I know, but he's Somnus now. We have to let it go. He's grown up. I don't know what it'll be after Somnus, but hopefully it's something closer to maybe. Let's get it started, folks. This is our second heat of Group A action. Mm. LGD and Optic Gaming, both these teams at the top of Group A, sporting a sweet three and one record. One of these teams will advance into the first place position and possibly almost an auto guarantee to move on at least into the main event. Yeah, I, l I love how Optic plays the lanes. Uh, they had a good info about what they're gonna do. So it feels like it's going to be a decent lane. LGD is going to have a farm, of course. Uh-oh. So. Looks like first blood opportunity here for Chalice. They hit him with the burrow, and of course, they got the metamorph. One more right click would do it, but he just gets out of reach. Zai's eating way too much damage from the tower, and he's going to have to backpedal a bit. Chalice will be drinking down that salve to heal on up, and it looks like he will avoid the first blood. Yeah, you want to use that uh, meta early on, yeah. just to zone him out, uh, look at the... So he wants to give it a second try, though. This time he has the benefit, of course, of using the reflection after committing it. They push, like, yeah, they push the wave, use the glyph, so they uh, deal a lot of damage to the tower as well. Oh, almost 200. It's going to actually drop below 200 damage. So with the Chen Creep uh, being picked up, uh, he needs to run away go around because yeah, they blocked the block the spot they being spotted though yeah they have that ward very nicely placed 
from uh, Optic to see the movement here of Nova. We hear the magic that, missile fly out, and they're looking to make a catch, and they will get it done. It's Nova who gets that first blood on the 3-3. Three, three. They had to have seen the rotations over, but he was getting a little too caught up in the mix up there and uh, ended up paying the price. Yeah, Chen picked up uh, the mud golem, so he has <laughs> the extra one as well. So that's four rocks dropped, uh, 125 damage. It's pretty impossible to play against. Once Chalice. The, once that mud golem splits, he's going to have more. I know from experience, like Coddle, like it is not obviously the best defensive support. Once they're making an approach on your core, you're just kind of like, man, I'll try to line up a blast, but I don't know what else the hell you want from me. So once they kind of get on to 3-3, there's only so much that Peter can offer to be able to help him out. So maybe they helped him out with the blocking, uh, with this camp, having these four mud golems is just going to be a disaster. Ooh, so boost tall. for Peter between the golem and a magic missile. They stun him down a couple of times, but he won't yeah. be able to slither out. Xnova wants to have this camp. Uh, high contention for the side camp there in the top lane. But they are at least sapping away a bit of the XP and even going in for some last hits as well. FY. But a blast will fly forward from Peter to help guarantee at least some money. Dyer's top tower is under attack. How is the CS working out in the mid lane? It looks like DK is just a little favorable there. 18 to Lena's 15. Stun out. Bottom lane. They're going to give it the old third, fourth try for Chalice, but just fending him back. This is the second Metamorphosis now pulled up from Pycat. Yeah, most of the time, uh, Chalice, if he has a good game, he really shines on those uh, blink-initiating heroes, but uh, he's really shut down. He's sitting on, what, uh, 6 CS? Not, not the worst, but he's going to need to bring a lot of region to the bottom lane. Or a lot of TPs, right? Seven of them, probably? <laughs> That's what they thought worked for him last time. Top lane, net onto Peter. And a magic missile. Jump in from Amy, but again, Peter's just going to casually walk through trees and away from trouble. The heavy aggression is still there from LGD. It was KP, not the Chalice. The yeah, I was going to say, it was someone yeah. else, but he's like, I don't think I'm going to take Somnus' advice on, or KP's advice on this one. I love the... The build on Lena with uh, Null Talisman and the Ring of Achillite kills. There's so much damage, mana region, and a little bit of stats. Plus, she also has region because why not? Stuns will be traded from both sides here. C, C, and C will be forced to use the south. It gets promptly canceled, but he's got the life necessary. More pull action happening across the map here. Peter doing his best to mitigate things a bit. And as we see, Chalice and Pycat now turned into a 1v1 kind of a lane because we have Zai currently rotated over towards this mid lane, maybe looking yeah. for a possible setup. But he got pinged, so I think they know something's happening. They do have that ward. They, they can't kill him un unless uh, CCNC gets uh, that level 6. They're not going to have enough. I already said that they're going to rotate once he gets the level 6, but it's not very effective. Top lane is pretty much... Uh, Lost for up the gaming keeper of the light can't uh, be there, so Veno should just start scaling plague wards to defend the tower against the creeps. If the creep decide to dive him, use a uh, venomous gale on the creep to slow him down. And uh, that's pretty much it. Stun, toss onto Zai, throw a tree at him. Whoop. Almost gets him down with that. Zai will be forced back, but this has got to be a little unnerving for Optic. I mean. Nova is residing in their jungle, just kind of doing their own free will, and top lane continues to be a struggle as we see here. A hard move being made for 3-3. And Illuminate will fly out from, from PPD, but it's still only level one. They'll now level it up into the second point. But uh, you know, not the biggest amount of kill potential in this lane for Optic. Oh, Chen is already behind the Dragonite. They don't have the best, uh, the best uh, creeps to initiate with. They need to get close Lina. There's a case on top. Oh, Chalice welcomes Zai to the high ground. Zai was just trying to waltz over and see what was happening with that bounty rune and he will head out the other direction. Chalice will TP back to the tower because Pycat's there and he is metamorphed. Reflection onto Chalice but Pycat will just try to take out the wave and soften up the tower even further. His goal, of course, is just kind of be left alone and continue to farm up for the rest of his team if possible. But right now he is winning in the CS game. AM is nipping at his heels, though. Yeah, that bottom tower is being <coughs> really pressured from Optic. 
Top lane can be easily defended with Venomancer, he just needs uh, a little bit more levels to get uh, those points in Plague Wards. Yeah, meanwhile, Peter's taking out Waves, bottom lane. Zai goes for the move, this time onto FY. They were not successful at getting Chalice down in this bottom lane, but the second that FY shows up, they find a easier supple target to jump on, and they are successful with it. Optic get themselves on the board, this game's even one-to-one. -one. Yeah, we didn't talk about uh, Mana Void on Anti-Mage. It received uh, a bit buff. It's uh, really good on uh, level one. 0 0.2 more than it was before, so... You can be more active early on, but the problem is Optic Gaming doesn't have uh, heroes with big mana pool. I mean, Coddle, when he gives them Chakra, does enhance their mana pool a little bit bigger, so... But they also get the mana. <laughs> they do get the mana. But they could get the mana and then spend it all. I'm overthinking it. Smoke out here for LGD with Nova and company. As the Hellbear Smasher and the Seder with FY, they should have a decent amount of lockdown. It looks like their sights are going to be set for CC and C with She's the Laguna choice. available in the pocket. Should lead to instant demise. Oh, CC is like, oh, cool, an invis room. Oh, but they look to make the move onto him, and it looks like it's an ambush. There's the Hellbear Smasher, there's the stun, and he just gets obliterated. Yeah, a little bit of uh, overkill there with Laguna, maybe. Oh, he had the. 12 charges on a wand, so that's fine. Even anti-mage rotated. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. Top lane, after Ame makes his return, he's going to be welcomed with a Poison Gale and a Burrow Strike, but he's an anti-mage. Doesn't really care too much about him with level 1 spell shield. I guess he's not going to be eating too much heavy harassment. But the attention is uh, back at this mid lane. It looks like PPD has shown up to add some extra defensives. Yeah, that uh, mid tier 1 tower is really important because it opens up uh, the entrance to the jungle as well. You don't have to go around anti mage on top lane. Yeah, he should be able to blink away from this potentially. He's looking to hit hard. He does the mana void, but it doesn't do as much damage as he was hoping. And he'll have to blink away. Yeah, you could see the increased damage. Uh, that 0 0.2 really makes a difference. He decided to go for Ring of Aquila just to increase his farming and damage it. I have a feeling that the uh, Ring of Aquila will be slightly nerfed in the probably couple of patches. F for Agi heroes, it's just uh, w way too good, even on some other heroes like uh, OD, mid, la mid laners like Lina as well. It provides you way too much, and it's cheap, easy to make. Smoke from LGD. They're on the move. And it looks like they're going to be heading all the way down. Pycat has had a little bit too much happening for him in this bottom lane with 69 and 18 CS. I feel like it's time for him to pay the piper. <laughs> Hello. And there it is. Bada bing, bada boom. See you later. Yeah, he stayed on the bottom lane for way too long. They should have swapped uh, after the tower was gone. Maybe rotate 33 on the bottom lane because that's the... That's the loss oh, they can here we take. Go. First dragon form of the game. This time they will be successful in taking down Ame. Well, you take a little bit. Let's take a I like how Pycat's even like, well played. Well played. Thanks for getting back. Thanks for getting me back right there, guys. A carry for carry. An eye for an eye. Yeah. What's the second one? A tooth for, for a tooth. tooth. And, and then? And then a gonad for a gonad. I, I don't top know. Tower has Tower's a piece. Core's a piece. Peter, though, helps defend out this bottom lane. Blasting it on forward, even gets the third point now into that Illuminate. I always like to see where they go from here, though. Do you get the instant pick onto that Spirit Form? In this game, probably. Getting the earlier Blinding Light could be pretty damn beneficial, but sometimes they get greedy and they like to go for the third point into Chakra Magic, or maybe Value Point into Mana Leak. Yeah, they're keeping the pressure. They have uh, Siege Creep with Veno Wards, which are level 4, Dragon Knight, uh, they deal a lot of damage to that tower. Rotation's coming. We got a Laguna up again here for Somnus. And he looks to make the run in. CCNC has been spotted with FY assisting that wave of terror. Or was he not spotted? Oh, canceled the TP with the Mana Void. 
now they'll be able to get him. I thought FY might have yeah, seen there. <laughs> but I guess he didn't want to do anything about it. All right. No, it was really weird by FY. He started attacking Ward instead of uh, getting into that uh, tree to see what he's going to do. I mean, they saw him having a TP. Meanwhile, on a mid lane, uh, <laughs> Peter, got the Peter tower. gets the tower <laughs> because why not? I just probably got, uh, you know, a little unlucky, I guess, uh, with an auto right click. Well, I guess. Full metamorph and illusions, but yeah, you know, I'm sure Peter's like, eh, I'll take the money, I guess. He gets tranquils, so he's one of the fastest heroes in the game right now. Arcane Rune Keeper of the Light. Feels good, man. Name reward. more iconic duo. Don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this blast. blast I love that again. new spot. I like. I Ever since like they added and moved around these neutral camps, now you could easily blast through two camps at once or stack two camps at once. It's pretty fun. And you can even do it on the other side if you are a little closer. It's going to take a lot of time for Anti-Mage to get to his Battle Fury. What is he sitting at? 4.5k network. Then you have a Terrorblade who's 2.2k more than him. Bottom, Yules, Stun, Laguna. Man, Laguna feels like it's just up all the time. It's just over a minute, and I feel like they just continue to find ganks and opportunities to use it on nearly every minute. Which is good. Again, we were expecting that outside the anti-mage that they would have a nice four-man movement to be able to cause a lot of a ruckus and a lot of attention to pull away from Ame. And we'll maybe see a bit more coming in the hands of Chalice. He's getting pretty close to that blink dagger now, just about 150 away. Yeah, the problem is Ahmed does not have any vision on the top lane, so he can't farm safely. So Dragonite should uh, get an initiation item. Most of the time Dragonites get uh, Blink Dagger because they can position themselves better. Uh, but this game, Shadowblade feels better because you can upgrade it to Silver Edge and then break Cantimage in the later stages. Yep. Tiny has enough gold to buy a Blink Dagger. He just needs to get to the shop. Maybe he will even decide to go for a Shadow Blade. Not sure. Has a Blink queued up. Seems to be thinking about it for a bit. Well, he can't get close to to the side shop because there's a lot of Venom Wards. Looks like he'll eventually make his way there, but for his teammates here, it's a Laguna up again, so why not look to find something? Samus waits behind the tower here to see if 3-3 shows himself. They'll probably see the wards there and consider a dive, but do have to be privy to the possible rotation. But while that happens, if they make a hard commitment to the top lane, Optic will do the same, and they are going to do the same on the bottom. Look at this. Metamorph, Illusions, and a Dragon form. Towers don't stand a chance. There's an Epic committed. Hard move in from the back lines, but Nova just pieces right out. They're going to continue. Yeah, they are. Meanwhile, I mean... They're having a hard time breaking through all these ridiculous wards at the top. They have Keeper of the Light uh, to call someone on bottom if needed. They might as well go for a mid tower, actually, because uh, the lane is pushed as well. Peter's here. He's got preemptive blast to catch anyone who tries to even make an approach. He actually times it out nicely to blast through the wave. Hard pressure really going to be coming in from Optic on this one. A little bit of time left on this Metamorph. It looks like they'll secure not one, but two tier twos. Zai finds Chalice at the top oh. with that new Blink Dagger. Tries to go for the TP, but they quickly knock him on the Noggin, and he's going to get canceled. Optic on a tear right now. Yeah, nice play there by Venge. I mean, she, she has 70 damage, but managed to deny the tower from Terrorblade, which is a huge chunk of gold for top everyone. Top lane, Ame. Sorry. A little close there. You yep. hefty damage. I could run into Zai. Oh, Zai spots him, hits him with the burrow. He has the blink up again. Tries to go and hide within the trees. Oh. CCNC tried to maybe blink over, but it looks like he's not going to get close enough. Yeah, so CCNC decided to go for a blink dagger. It, it costs less and uh, gives him the better positioning in fights that I was talking about. Uh, but still has uh, Shadow Blade queued up. Do you think that's too much for mobility and you should just have committed to the Shadow Blade, or do you think it's just still might nice to have He both. might swap things around if they feel like they need to break uh, the high ground. He should swap to a BKB, so he will be that front line. There, there's a lot of magical burst damage. All right, this tower will not get taken away from Pycat. He gets it even in melee form. Swap back, though, from FY. Pycat looks to juke him within the trees. 3-3, three, three, waddles himself on in. Still doesn't have that ultimate, so he's just trying to do it the old-fashioned way, but boom! 
Somnus zaps down Piecat and will be able to get the finish. Somnus now dominating at this point, but we're not done yet. Chalice combo on 2-3-3 three, three will help get the finish. It's Nova who picks up that one. Now on a killing spree here. A couple of kills trickling the way of LGD at this point. They should play more safe inside of Optic. Uh, I mean, Anti-Mage is still not a huge factor. Look, look at his farm. Still 1,000 gold away from that Battle Fury because he decided to go for all these small items. Power Threads, uh, Keela, Magic Wand. He needed that to, to survive, but it's going to delay his uh, Battle Fury timing. Ixnova, again, playing really, really well. Zero deaths so far, level 8 on that gen. Wants to scale into the late game, so Aghanim Scepter should be the choice for him. Mm -hmm. Zai with the fresh Blink Dagger. And a smoke. It's time to make a strong debut with it. Blinking DK, Blinking SK. The Kings. Okay. The Kings are on the move. Double K for me. So Venomancer with the, with the Hood will build into a pipe, which will give them a great uh, Tier 3 Siege potential as well. Oh, they spotted Chalice in the river, and as he heads to the high ground, they welcome him with open arms. Can they get the burst, though? They need a bit more. He does everything he can to be able to shrug it off with the help of the wand, but they eventually get it done. Somnus, though, finds his own bit of return fire, getting the finish onto 3-3. Three, three, one apiece, but here comes potential revenge. Jump in. Stun one. Stun two. And they'll get Nova down. Yeah, there's a lot of slow potential coming out from uh, Opti Gaming. Sometimes I want to call them OG, but... Uh, so they have a reflection, they have a Venomancer with all that slow, they can have Caustic Finale. Dragonite as well, when he hits. So they should just keep keep the pressure. Uh, this opens up uh, the Roach for them, and then they can easily siege the, the tier 3s. Yep. That's a double damage on the Terror Blade, because why not? Peter blasts another wave or so, and with this Roche, he's pretty much going to have his Agnums complete as well. So, I think Sanking should be the one buying all the wards for Opta Gaming now, and give uh, Keeper of the Light time to spike his Blink Dagger. He's already sitting on a point booster and 1.8k gold, and then they're good to go. That, this really feels uh, like an Optic, uh, Optic game, if they don't uh, throw it away. Battle Fury finished on Anti-Mage, so he's going to... Try to split a lot, but you have Keeper of the Light with a recall, and you have two mobile heroes in terms of uh, Sanking and Dragon Knight with Blink Dagger, so they can easily catch Anti-Mage and uh, just stop that split push. Anti-Mage does have that Battle Fury now complete. Queued up the Asha likely into the Manta, of course. LGD just had a little bit of a stunt right now. Optic's advantage isn't the biggest on paper, with just about 1k, but feels more significant than that for sure. Yep. Uh, Lina decided to go for cast range. Um, some, somehow I feel 30 damage is just way too good not to have it and then you scale really good into the late game. Let's we'll see if she can at least hit the tower from further. Oh, jumping from Chalice. Tosses right back onto Somnus. And uh, he's able to get off the combo but 33 lives on. Now a turnaround. It looks like Nova's going to be the first one to hit the deck. Optic just come out suddenly in full force, ready for the turnaround. Yeah, he's really tanky with that magic wand and hood on Venomancer. Mm -hmm. So pretty hard to take down. They were trying to bait with Chen creeps just to give the vision and initiate the fight. But Zai was ready. I think Zai, if, if he decides to go for another item, I think he should go for Yule Scepter so they have something to dispel the send back to Chen. Has a Bloodstone, here. maybe Ooh. Suicide will be needed. Oh! Turn around, nice stun connection. Chalice moves in with the toss. Pycat very low, he has no Sunder, so he needs to wait on the outside here. Ooh, Mana Leak. Been picked Balance. up, but they are going to easily send him right back home and away. Let's see if Zai decides to go for, for the Duel Scepter. They really need it. He already has that Wind Lace, which is uh, 1.4 uh, percentage of Duel Scepter as an item. Why not use it? Good match. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you were calling out for uh, Blink Dagger, I think, on Peter's Coddle, but I guess he could also get a Yule's, you know? What kind of Blink Dagger on Peter? No, I said Aghanim Scepter. Oh, okay. Are you even listening to me? I the swear, I'm calling the cops. We're, we're checking the tapes. Here we go. Trouble, it looks like, for Sophus here. Oh, or is he going to be able to get the suicide? <laughs> He's gone. So, Anti-Mage with the casual Yasha. 
Done now. Toss in. FY in a bit of trouble. The mana leak. He's not going to be able to make it back of the way. Turns around and decides to do off the magic missile. But Optic are moving in to the home of LGD. Pycat, fearsome as ever, just starts Radiant chopping away at that tier three. CCNC does have Dragon Form in just one more second. Could decide nice to pop dodge. It, and he will. Jump in. It's the blast. Can he get away? Oh, and they're going to have to use the Aegis on this one, but looks like it's still going to work out just fine here. FY goes down again. Now the Raxes are totally exposed. Fortify is going to have to be used. Nova just trying to do what he can here. Jump into Chalice. Another stun, but Zai responds with his own. He's going to be forced to toss Zai back. But it looks like they are going to be able to at least get the range. Rax down this melee. Seems to be dropping as well. CCNC will get, get the finish. And Optic walk away with the first bit of significant base damage. Now, of course, the whole time, our anti-mage friend has been farming, but we'll have to see how much it's, it's going to benefit him and the rest of the team here. Looks like he's got just uh, pretty much his manta complete. No, he's, he's going for or Lincoln Sphere. That's what it seems to be. He doesn't want to get uh, Sundered or Sanking Stun, Dragonite Stun, which is pretty... Pretty good choice. I feel like if uh, he wanted to go for something, he could have gone for maybe Agony at the first, which is pretty much the same cost. Against the Dragonite stun, it's good. Against the Sunder, not not that good. What what happens? So you block and uh, use it on him. So. It actually just loses the Sunder, if I'm not mistaken. Samus in a bit of trouble here, but send back from Chen. Bail him out. LGD just using Chalice and Ame at the moment to kind of split up these other lanes. FY moves forward. Him and Ame are going to be eating the Poison Nova, but that means that Ame is just going to be able to pop him on down. Peter. Calling in Zai for assistance while trying to totally mana leak out Ame. Ame is able to hide and the side. They actually get the positive read on him, but he's already TP'd away. Yeah, that's going to be a death of FY. Uh, day, daylight is in three seconds, so this is the good timing to push. They're already drawing on a minimap. Uh, Venomancer, uh, he decided to go for Arcane Boots, and I was expecting from 33 to go for Eon this, this game because there's a lot of burst damage potential from Tiny and Lina, mm -hmm. especially Anti Mage. He has uh, quite quite high mana pool. Looks like bottom is going to be the course for Optic to set sail, but meanwhile, a little bit of trading here on that mid lane. I imagine they're going to be calling in CCNC any moment. He has a dragon form ready to go. I mean, there is some minor pressure coming in from LGD up at the top lane, but Optic know that their push is that much better. It's daytime. He transformed BKB on a Terrorblade. That he's so jacked. Peter just needs to keep blasting right down that mid. By jack, I don't mean Jack Chen Jack. Oh, LGD. Another send back could be used. One on Tiny. That tower is done for. Quickly going to try to wipe out the wave. The wards are starting to get planted. The siege is just so good here from Optic. I'm not too sure what LGD could do to offer a swap, maybe? Swap back for PyCat. He just instantly pops the BKB, turns his attention on the Chalice, and will easily delete him from the game. They're all full HP. There's just nothing you can do. It, it feels so bad when you're playing Chen and then you're stuck in your own base. That, that's the worst kind of a game that Chen can have. Anti-Mage uh, actually finished the Manta style because he needed an item to fight, but they need a Tiny. Uh, they is still up for another 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Roche, what about the Roche timings? Um, may respawn in a minute. So they're just going to wait uh, for the next uh, Metamorphosis and uh, yep. try to finish the game from there. Maybe scout the Roche, go for Roche because the lanes are pushed in on the LGD gaming side and uh, just take it slow. Give Aegis to deal the Terrorblade. They're really not in a rush, but they want to keep the pressure because, it, I mean, when you're playing against the Anti-Mage uh, with just one good mana void, he can turn the fight around. This looks like a tough hill to climb or a tough long green wall to climb, am I right? Oh. LGD just kind of really stuck indoors with a few of their cores trying to whittle out, find some farm, and trying to be relevant here. But like you were mentioning, Optic just simply have to play with the clock and could decide to go a very safe route and 
taking out the shrines, getting the Roche, and then kind of advancing on forward, or could just, you know, wait for the cooldown of Metamorph and such. Yeah, only 19 kills this game, not uh, not too too much action going on, but still. So there's two four staffs uh, on the side of LGD, one on Tiny. He decided to go for more of a utility build. I can save someone who gets Dragonite stunned or just uh, sanking stunned. One on Lina. That's a full pike. That's why I mentioned that she should have gone for the damage talent instead. Burrow strike in from Zai. The chase is on. They're gonna have to settle for FY. It would look like. Oh. Dominating for PyCat here after getting that sweet little pick off. Just. I, yeah. I was I, just. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the play from Sanking. He bought the four staff recipe but uh, realized that they need that heal scepter to cancel the DPs and the send back from Chen. So he actually bought uh, the old scepter. Well played, Zai. CCNC already in his dragon form. And here comes the party. They still have 20 seconds of daytime to make this work and to push forward into Megas. It's all or nothing right now for LGD if they want to hold on to the top position of Group A, but their odds are certainly stacked against them. The jumping from Chalice, the instant Yules is there, the stun follow-up, the bump back, the bump forward, it doesn't matter. He's going to get bumped straight to hell. And now it's all on the rack. So buyback is going to be forced out, but how can they stop the action coming in? Well, they can use a Fortify. That will help for a bit. It's nighttime now. Okay. No more additional heals coming in from the Illuminates, and no extra un unobstructed vision. But okay. maybe, yeah, maybe they could have committed to to kill the melee Raxes uh, with the BKBs, both BKBs, 110, 119 second on both cores of side of Optic. Th this is do or die for LGD Look right at now. They smoke and they're looking to go for a chase, recognizing the opportunity to go for Optic while maybe some of those cooldowns are there. And while it's nighttime, 3-3 three, three, dishes out the Poison Nova, jumping in. Chalice trying to get something done, but he gets hit with a mana leak. The blasts are going to be coming out. Stun connection is there. Nicely done from Zai for the setup. Okay, here we go. Zapping on in. 3-3 will get finished, but he already spent everything, so he's going to be fine with that. Two to drop from the side of LGD. And Optic still come out in the better. They need Phoenix I'll be just to turn night into day. Looks like Somnus could be in a bit of trouble here. Yules, they wait, and uh, they're going to be able to blast him down. That was a huge mana void. The uh, Pycat swapped uh, with one of the anti-mage illusions, which were full HP. Dragonite form is up, but he doesn't have too much HP. Three, three down. They, they should just uh, try to get the Roche. They're not in a hurry. A lot of buybacks committed on the side of LGD. Roche is up, so that's Cheese and Aegis on both cores. With... with uh, with those up on Optic Gaming's uh, course, I don't think they that LGD has any chances of uh, coming back into this game. Yeah. Anti-Mage has a Lincoln Sphere, but still, he doesn't deal damage. There's also Crimson Guard finished uh, on Venomancer. He's super jacked, tanky. Look at his HP. I mean, he can build a lot of, uh, a lot of utility items uh, because of that uh, 90 GPM talent on level 10. So three, four, one, two, one. three, four staffs on side of uh, LGD. A lot of push me pull you play. I you mean, they're, they're they're trying, man. They're trying to stretch out the clock as much as possible. Do here. you know what push me pull you is? Mm, it's, what is it? I hope it's not sexual. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, that whatever I think a goat plus something plus a horse from Doctor Doolittle. Nope, nope. Sorry, not familiar with that one. All right. <laughs> oh, I just gotta Google that after this. LGD creeping around, knowing that the attention is gonna be toward this Roche pit. Maybe taking a fight outside their best base would be in their best interest here. Peter begins the recall process. Ame looks for a jump in. Zai will flee out. Ame thinking about chasing. Yeah, the lines are pushed out uh, for LGD, the ones that they have megas. So they should take a fight. It's a uh, Daytime in 50 seconds. Yep. Holy shit, I'm good with this clock. Day and night time. Samus has been just planted inside this Roche pit, thinking that he's hiding in there. Now he decides to roll on out. 
Jump in from Chalice, nice stun on the two. He gets the lob from CCNC who quickly pops the BKB. Lines up a stun onto Nova. Somnus is able to scoot out to the high ground and gets sent packing just before Nova dies. And uh, the follow-up could be for Ame. Ame is just trying to pull their attention away from the base. Please come and chase me. Please, thinking about doing something else. Uh, obviously, Optic are just gonna be done with that chase and take their business into the Roche pit. And that's a third blade with the full butterfly, level 19. Once they use the reflection with auras coming up from Venge, Anti-Mage just burning his own mana. Way too strong. They, they want to take a fight, four versus five, because if they lose the Roche, they're definitely losing the game. Jump in. Stun. Oh, Ame. Blinking into assist, gets welcomed with the stun right away, and the mana leak is going to be what pops him there. He is out of this one 70 seconds without a buyback. I'm not sure if Optic are aware of that or not, but this is this could be the beginning of the end right now. Looks like a follow-up is going to be there for Somnus. They'll get him too. Yeah, that's that's the game, definitely. I mean, the lanes are pushed out. Uh, it's just a matter of time until they decided to go for a mid lane. I mean, they're trying to stall things out. Even FY is pulling their attention maybe up to the top of the lane. Chalice is actually pretty close to that Roche. Does Chalice dare jump in? He, he needs to. Do it, buddy. Let's come on, Chalice. Come on, Chalice. I believe. Let's go. He got it. There we go, baby. I don't think it's going to help him, but they got it. Still, he, he okay. <laughs> Slides out. Goes to the TP. And see you later. One of, one of the better plays that he could have gone for, besides stealing the Aegis, he could have forced one of them out b after he used the combo, so that's uh, less chance of them picking up the cheese as well. He knew he it's was It's about the perfection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a cute play, a cute play, but this one looking like it's gonna belong to Optic here. And here comes the cherry on top. A jump in from Zai with the epicenter to catch out the back lines. Their full focus gonna be set onto Somnus here. He gets the Yules off with the send back. He'll be back inside his base, but only two will be alive here for this defense. Ransacked base, only one more Rax remains. Oh, they that fortify lift. it. They're like, ah, you want it? You're gonna have to work for it, guys. <laughs> and they're working for it. LDD should know that this one is as good as over, but they are just gonna force Optic to really work for it. Finally, the call has been made from the Prince FY, and it's now Optic who sit as kings of Group A. The green wall stands tall. Nice to say, Dakota. That's 4-1 um, for Optic. So, LGD is 3-2, Vici Gaming 3-2 as well, Liquid 2-2 two, two so far. So who does Optic have left to play? I don't think they've played Liquid yet, right? Optic. That's going to be a pretty nice matchup. They need to play Liquid, yep. they need to play... Who Liquid else? and Keen. Keen. Oh, yeah. So I think it's... It's almost without saying that Optic may have just guaranteed yep. their spot into a top two position means that they have guaranteed a straight to the main event. That's got to feel pretty damn good. Optic's playing so damn well, man. And BPD and his drafts are really on point this yeah. tournament. And PyCat too. They keep getting PyCat those kind of core farming heroes, and he's like a machine. He's like, I know what I got to do, and I'm going to do it. Yeah, most of the time they just last pick PyCat's hero because they want to have the matchup advantage and the... Uh, I mentioned it before the game started that Anti-Mage doesn't really look like a good pick and that this is the reason why. He, even though he had the most CS, uh, he couldn't do anything this game. He blinks in, they just kite around him. Too much uh, anti-Mage anti, anti -mage heroes. Yeah, LGD's got me scratching my head a bit because some games it's like they're playing like all-stars and then some games they kind of do these funky drafts. The, the, the Anti-Mage pickup reminds me of the first game we casted of theirs when they did like the Arc Warden and stuff. Now, now don't get me wrong, I heard that Ami's a big... Arc Warden pub player, but it, I don't know. The, the drafting feels a bit hit or miss. So we'll have to see how things will pan out for LGD. But again, congratulations to Optic Gaming now at the top. That is just our second heat of Group A action today. We'll cut to a break, and when we come back, we're going to be heading right into heat number three.